Good morning, Lakeside. Happy Sunday to you. Happy foggy Sunday. You know, I guess no surprise, right? Tis the season. Uh, so glad that you made it here safely. And as we gather together this, uh, this morning, this Sunday morning, the Sabbath morning, I want to share with you this scripture that's been on my heart. And uh, I've been, I'm been uh, meditating on just the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, what it means to us. And so as we begin this morning of worship, I'd like to share with you from Philippians, what Paul wrote to the Philippians. And this is what he had communicated. He said, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. So what is that mindset? Who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Meaning, yes, he's God, but he came in human form. He humbled himself. And so Paul continues, rather... He made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. Now, we use official church uh, uh, lingo here. That's what we call incarnate. God is man. And so Paul continues, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Now, kind of summation here. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. There's one of his names. He's Lord to the glory of God the Father. Would you pray with me, everyone? Lord, thank you for our Sunday morning. And as we enter to worship, Lord God, we, we want to focus in on what's really important. I know we have many things that are on our minds and hearts, but our being here is not about It's about you, God. And we want to give to you what you deserve. And that's our heartfelt praise. And we want to remember what you had done for us of giving your son to die on the cross, who humbled himself to do so, so that we have what we're doing right now, a time to worship you, to know you, to have a personal relationship with you. That could not happen without Jesus going to the cross. And so, Lord, we thank you for that. We come to worship you for that. And we also come to focus on who Jesus is, the name of Jesus, what it means to us. Jesus, just as Paul wrote here, you are Lord. You are master of our lives. You are king. You are our prince of peace. Jesus, you mean everything to us. And if we can't quite wrap our minds around that right now. Lord, please help us understand the depth of that and the meaning of that. Because we're going to be singing about that, speaking about that, about how you are, how who you are, and how important you are. And so, right now, God, take what we offer to you. May it be a sweet incense to you as we offer up this to Jesus, your name being the name above all names. It's the name of Jesus that we pray these things. Amen. You are holy. You are mighty. And you are worthy. So I will follow, I will follow, and I will listen, I will listen, and I will love you, I will love you, all of my days, all of my days. 
be reminded as to who Jesus is. Would you stand, please? Jesus, you are. You are holy. You are mighty. You are worthy. Worthy of praise, and I will follow, I will listen, and I will love you all of my days. All right, Lakeside, let's sing that. I will see you. Take some time to greet one another this Sunday morning.
Forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, you were condemned. I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Let's sing that again now. I'm forgiven. Because you were forsaken, I'm accepted, you were condemned. I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me, because you died and rose. Oh, 
What amazing love. Let's sing of that now. Amazing love. How can it be? It's in my King would die for me. Amazing love. I know it's true. And it's my joy to honor you. In all I I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died in the Oh, Jesus. What amazing love! hear us now as we say, you are this. You seated everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I'll be reading the call to confession. And then we'll have a prayer of confession. And God has given us an assurance of pardon. When we come into the holy presence of God, our own humanity is laid bare. When we stand in the living presence of truth, our own falsehood is revealed. People of God, let it uh, let us acknowledge who we are and ask ever-present God to forgive us. Mm. Shall we pray? Mm. Almighty God, we confess how hard it is to be your people. Yes. You have called us to be the church, to continue the mission of Jesus <coughs> Christ to our lonely and confused world. Yet we acknowledge that we are more apathetic mm. than active, mm. isolated than involved, callous than compassionate, mm. obstinate than obedient, legalistic than loving. Gracious God, have mercy upon us and forgive our sins. 
Remove the obstacles preventing us from being your representatives mm. to a broken world. Mm. Awaken our hearts to the promised gift of your indwelling spirit. This we pray in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Amen. This is our assurance of pardon. I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness and from all your idols. I will cleanse you, and I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Jesus, you're my master and my king. Jesus, you're my Lord, my everything. Jesus, it's your blood that made me clean. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, how can you not say hallelujah to that, right? I'm not ashamed of your love, not ashamed of your grace, not ashamed of the cross, and not ashamed of your word. From the highest mountain top to the lowest valley low, I'll shout your name until the whole world knows. Jesus, you're my master and my king. Jesus, you're my Lord, my everything. Jesus, it's your blood that made me clean. Again, I Jesus, Jesus, you're my master and my king, Jesus, you're my Lord, my everything, Jesus, and it's your blood that made me clean. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, what can I do now? can I do but dance and shout? I have to let these praises out. I once was lost and oh so bound. By your grace I have. Amen. And the world can scream and shout for earthly temporary things. I can give my loudest praise to
stand with us here at Lakeside. We're going to cry out hallelujah together now. Here we go. Hallelujah. Now, let me hear your lakeside. Let's try that one more time here. Jesus, you're my master and my king. Jesus, you're my Lord, my everything. Jesus, it's your blood that made me clean. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. Would you please be seated? Let's pray. I'm going to start with Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made up us. We are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. Amen. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Lord, thank you for this time that we can come together as a community of believers and come here to support each other, come here to support our community around us, Lord. We know that there's many needs within um, our small community, Lord, and so I lift up those who are here today and those who can't be here with us, Lord. Father God, thank you for those prayers. First of all, lo Lord, thank you for Bible study this morning. It was so powerful how you teach Israel how to live. Same goes for us. Father God, thank you for just being so merciful to us. And thank you for the, the worship team, such wonderful music, remembering who you are and why we sing to you, Lord. Father God, I pray for Sui right now, Lord, as you keep her healthy with this baby, Lord. I was mentioned to bring her up, Lord. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to be pregnant, which us men don't understand, but uh, just keep her safe, Lord. Be with Kathy as we got one more week. Lord, I can't wait for that day. Father God, I also pray for Tim Abbas and the whole family, Lord. Be with Tim and the doctors that need to treat him, Lord. Such an awful thing to go through, but Lord, you're with him. And he's a believer, and that's what matters. Also, uh, Lord, be with Babette. So good to see her here with, with her kin. Father God, uh, bless her heart. Just be with her, Lord. Be with the whole family. Father God, be with our pastor. Not only is he our pastor, he's our friend, Lord. He does such a wonderful job up here. And, and Father God, it's the spirit that lives in him, as I mentioned to, to him earlier. Without the spirit, we can do nothing, Lord. So be with us all. Be with the people that have needs right now, Lord. You know their needs before they even speak it out or, or before pain hits them. You know 
that you can comfort them. And we ask this all in Jesus' name, amen. Speaking of uh, what's coming up here, Joe, um, you know, of course, we're praying over you and Kathy. Much anticipated. We continue praying, Kathy. We know that you are live streaming with us. And so just know that Lakeside continues to pray over you. And, and, and another way, friends, that we can um, be a part of this is um, there are going to be expenses uh, with this. And so if you feel led, if you'd like to go ahead and give um, toward those expenses that Joe and Kathy uh, are incurring, will be incurring, um, we have a basket in our foyer area if you'd like to go ahead and give. Or in just our regular offering, uh, looks like a church there, uh, offering uh, bin. Uh, you may go ahead and give there and just go ahead and write out that it's for the Hernandez family. So we pray blessings over you, Joe and, and Kathy. Um, and so uh, I already said good morning to you. I uh, don't know if I did that uh, for those who are watching on live stream. And uh, Sharon Dibble, we get to see you live here. So, so good to see you here again. Uh, the rain is a wonderful thing, but there's there's unfortunately <laughs> when it does rain we don't get to see as much of you and so we're glad that we get to see you here and so um, I I do want to make mention also in our foyer area everyone uh, last um, week we had our um, missions moment uh, to give us update as to what was happening with our uh, missions and the um, Jeannie and Ruth had provided some wonderful pictures for the booklets the prayer booklets, and if you have not grabbed any of those pictures, we have more available in that foyer area. So again, just right back there if you have not taken yours. And they're great, a great way to help us to focus our prayers to uh, specifically whom, you know, putting faces to just the names that we're, we're praying for and then the needs that they have. Okay, so let me talk about what's going on this upcoming week here, friends. And so Wednesday, we have Armando and Rita who are hosting that uh, special um, Bible discussion support group. Uh, in Wednesday, it'll be at 7 o'clock at their place. And if you don't know their address, it's right there for you. Or just go ahead and ask them. They wouldn't mind telling you. And then on Saturday, Saturday morning, the Whoever Shows Up Breakfast Club will be meeting at Chubby's this particular Saturday. And then after the worship service next week, everyone. Now, I know for you football fans, big game's coming up today, right? Championship Sunday, they call it. And then whoever wins those games will be going to the Super Bowl, which will be played in two weeks. And so just to help you get that edge of why do I have to wait so long? Hey, come to our uh, fundraiser luncheon after a church uh, next Sunday. That'll be that uh, halfway point. And so we're trying to raise funds for the upcoming family camp. That'll happen in June. And so we have soup. We have sandwiches that are available. And we invite all to be a part of that. Uh, whatever you can give, that's great. But even if you cannot, we'd love to have you there to enjoy that fellowship. So please, after the worship service next Sunday. And then I need to make mention of some... Uh, birthdays here and so um, uh, Miss Babette uh, you have a quite a crew with you uh, here and and, um, and, uh, and but also PJ way to go I mean I'm impressed here you, the whole they take up the whole row there I like that so kudos to to both of you there and so Babette um, now uh, I believe this is a daughter here Okay, okay, thank you, a and so uh, it's good to have you here this morning. <laughs> now, Allison has a birthday. Uh, oh, okay, <laughs> all right. Okay, <laughs> hmm, she's getting to know Lakeside pretty quickly here. <laughs> yes, and not, a and, and not only that, not only that, that we're going to sing happy birthday to her as well. And so uh, Allison's back there, and so we're going to sing happy birthday to Allison, everyone. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Allison. Happy birthday to you. All right. 
All right. See, Joe would not let them go by until we sang. He says, he says, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> All right. Way to go there, Joe. All right. Um, uh, let's see here. Tracy, um, your husband has a birthday coming up, so happy birthday to Roy. Uh, Chase McMahon has a birthday, so the blacks are, are out of town, and so happy birthday to Chase. Um, and Jim has a birthday, and then staying within the McMahon family, uh, Amy has a birthday. Now, let me point out here uh, an anniversary now. So Dwayne and Juanita Daniel. Now, they have an anniversary coming up on the 1st, coming up in a few days. Now, not just any anniversary, but, but Dwayne Daniel, how many years will it be for you and your bride? Six zero. Now, I know it's a fact that Dwayne has been practicing all week because he knew that I would be asking him about that. <laughs> and so way to go. <laughs> uh, how can I just tell you how much we love you and, and rejoice with you? 60 years. Uh, honey, you and I were just newlyweds, right? And so uh, uh, that's awesome. And so we love you and, and rejoice with you both for your upcoming anniversary. All right, and so uh, we, we are just blessed in many ways today. And so we here in the Hanson family, we got a couple of our grandbabies here. Uh, they came nice and early to our rehearsal, and they've been so good practicing with us and uh, doing all sorts of things this morning and participating in the worship service. And unfortunately, I have to send them on because it's children's church time. So if you'd like to go ahead, kids, and Joe is opening up those doors for you. Have a good time there, kids. Oh, was he doing the drum? Yeah, yes, he, he does enjoy that. Fuck, many of our grandbabies like to do that. <laughs> Woo, yeah. All right, thank you. Okay, here we go. Yeah. All right, all right. Man, it's so good to be here. Um, we'll be finishing up our, our better series this morning. But you know what? I, I will be honest with you. I'm, I'm, I'm so blown away whenever I stand by this pulpit and that there's an actual message to be given. And, and, and you, most of you know that I'm, I can be pretty transparent, and I will be transparent with you. Um, so Wednesday... We had this thing at Armando and Rita's, um, and it was awesome. It was so good. But in my experience, whenever something good for the kingdom of God takes place, something negative is waiting. Um, that night, when I went home, Jeannie and I went home, really enjoyed it. Um, we got news about my mom. Her health just took a major dive. And um, my mom's on live stream right now, so she's listening. So, mom, God bless you. I'm going to talk about you. So, <laughs> that's all there is to it. But it, it was hard. Um, 
based on her condition, it was really, really hard. And, and I, I'll be honest with you, I'm like, is the Lord going to take mom home tonight? Um, and so the next morning, we had to call 911 to get her to the hospital because her health was really, really bad. And, you know, I go to the hospital, and I, 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 I work with a lot of people. I, I deal with families, sickness. But when it's your own mother in the hospital, it's a whole different ballgame. And, um, and then my wife and I got confirmation that her, her little sister, who we love dearly, she has ALS. And all these things, I was just so weary that whenever I sat down to try to prepare this message, I'm like, God, I just don't want to do it. I'm tired. I'm weary. And so it's a miracle whenever these messages come together because it's not me. It's the Lord. And so I'm excited to bring this message because it's been a great series for me. I hope it's been good for you better. We're the last Sunday of January, so we're in this new year still, and we're focusing on better. And today is better witness. And the main idea of this message is that God has given us an opportunity to share his love in the world. Love. What a beautiful word. Every single person wants to be loved. Where does that come from? Where does love come from? It comes from the creator of the world. It comes from Jesus. Love. But in order to experience love, we must always be ready to share that love of Jesus in our words and in our actions. We can either be, or we can either give Jesus a good name, or we could be the reason why someone would reject him. How many times people have said, ah, you know, I don't go to church anymore. How come you don't go to church anymore? You know what, I, I just didn't like the way I was treated. Now, I don't, I don't know what goes on with that, um, but more than likely, they probably experienced a negative witness to the Lord. But let's, let's seek the Lord in prayer and ask him to bless this message. Lord, give us the grace this morning and the confidence to share your good news with others this year. Let our lives tell the story of your love and your kindness. Bring the people into our community that you want us to witness to. And we ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So like I mentioned, we're going to wrap up this morning this sermon series better. And each Sunday we've been looking at ways with the relationship with Jesus, how that relationship can make our lives better. By fully submitting to Jesus opens us up to his transformative power. Now next Sunday, I'm looking forward to getting back into Luke. And we are. We're going to look at that transforming power when Jesus confronts a demon-possessed man. And I'm looking forward to bringing that message. But by submitting to Jesus, it opens us up to his amazing power. Now, the first week, we looked at beginning the new year with better priorities better priorities, that when we put God first, everything else just falls into place. But if we get that wrong, the most important things in our lives are going to suffer. That's what we learned about better priorities. 
Then we looked at the second message, which is having better relationships. That the right people we surround ourselves with will have a huge impact in our lives. I ran into a, a patient uh, about a week and a half ago who um, she knew one of the grade school kids that I hung out with. And she was asking, how is he doing? And man, he was such a nice kid and blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, he was a jerk. He made my life miserable, but I hung out with him. But I was thinking, you didn't really know who he was. This guy was a jerk. But it just goes to show you, those who we hang out with, we need better people in our lives. We need like-minded, we need Christ-like people to have better relationships so that we can experience the life that God has for us. And then last week, we we talked about being connected with Jesus can help us make better choices. And it's funny that most of you probably forgot about everything I said, (laughs) except for Hot Pockets. The text I got, look at, I found Hot Pockets. <laughs> Some of you are wondering, what are you, what's that all about? Well, last week, watch, yeah, anyway. But better choices begin with the fear of God. And even the tiny choices that we make can lead to large wrong choices that are devastating. And just because you can doesn't mean that you should. That's kind of what we focused on. Well, this morning we're going to finish our series by being challenged to live this year better as a better witness. You know, when when, when I was a little kid, I could have made my siblings' lives miserable. See, being the youngest, I got picked on a lot. And I know my siblings who are probably watching right now are like, quit your crying. (laughs) But I could have been a really good witness for my parents. Because the abuse I got as the youngest, if my parents wanted to know something about my siblings, I would have been willing to testify (laughs) against them. I would have even been willing to lie about them to get them busted. But witness, witness. So we have a pretty good understanding of of what a witness is, like being a witness to a traffic accident, where you are there to give your statement of what you saw happen. Or maybe you're a witness to a historical event that you, 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 you share with others over the years. But the Bible talks a lot about being a witness. Not like I just mentioned, but something different. Instead, being a witness to the power of the crucified and resurrected Jesus. See, as Christians, as followers of Christ, we are commanded to be witnesses for Christ. And it's not really an option. In fact, it's the final instruction that Jesus gave his disciples before he ascends into heaven. So our main teaching here, when we get into our little outline this morning, the first thing is this, we see. That the fundamental job of a Christian is to be a witness. A witness. Being a Christian in its simplest form is sharing with others what Jesus has done in your life. It's offering up the evidence from your own experience that Jesus is who he says he is. 
People are going to learn about Jesus through your witness. In Acts 1, verse 8, Jesus gives a mandate to his disciples and to future followers like us. Acts 1, 8 says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now Jesus tells his followers that they will receive power from the Holy Spirit. What does that power from the Holy Spirit look like? Let me give you a few descriptions here, or a few ideas. First, it gives you the power to overcome sin. Sin. I hate that word, sin. It is so powerful. It is so easy to sin. I don't even have to think about it. So natural. So powerful. But there's another power that I need to overcome it. Because sin doesn't care about me. Sin wants to destroy me. I need a power to overcome it. In Galatians 5, 6, it says, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Walk by the Spirit. The power of the Spirit. And the second thing is that the Holy Spirit gives you the power to change your character. Galatians 5, 22 and 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control against such things there is no law. The power to change your character. You know, I've shared this before many times that I was so messed up. I was such a sinner. My character was terrible. And I wanted to change it. Because I hated who I had become. I hated who I was, but I couldn't. I needed a power outside of myself to change my character. And when Jesus changed my life, these are the things that flow. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. These things are so addicting. I can't get enough of them. And then there's the, the third thing is it gives you the power to live in truth. John 16, 13, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he'll guide you in all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. Man, we live in a world of lies. Every day we're being lied to. But it's that truth sets you free. Gives you that peace and that that joy, truth. And then the Holy Spirit gives the power to pray. Romans 8, 26, in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans. That words cannot express groans. I found myself this week because of my mom's situation. I'm like, God, I'm I'm groaning before you. I'm so tired. I'm so weary. Actually, I don't even have the strength to pray, God. But the Spirit understands that. And the Spirit says, let me help you. Let me groan to the Father for you. That power. But then the Holy Spirit gives the power to witness. That's 
shift our focus to witness. And the power believers receive from the Holy Spirit includes the courage, the boldness, the confidence, the insight, the ability, and the authority, the things that are so addicting to have. And if you believe that Jesus is your Savior, you can experience the power of the Holy Spirit in those six things as well. We forget because of the lies of the world, we forget because of the lies of the enemy, the power that is in you because of Jesus Christ. He gives you the courage, he gives you the boldness and the confidence. And God has important work for you to do for him. You know, we, we, we had a, a, a plurality of elders meeting yesterday. It was really good, really, really good. And one of the things that Dwayne said that just stuck with me in that meeting is that every single one of us has a calling from God. Every single one of us. And you have a responsibility. you got to figure out what that calling is. Because it's powerful. It's unique to you. And God wants to use it. He wants to harness it and put power into it so that you can say, man, look how valuable I am. I have meaning. I have significance. I have a purpose in this life. You know, it's interesting that... Um, the Greek word for witness is the word martis. Martis can actually be translated as martyr. When we think of the word martyr, we think of being burned at the stake for our faith. That's what I think about when I hear the word martyr. And that's obviously extreme, wouldn't you think? But there has to be some sacrifice. Some challenge in your faith. See, we can't go on saying that you are a Christian by just cruising through life, showing no evidence of your faith. See, martyr is a word that shows up throughout the book of Acts, and the early Christians demonstrated their faith through Christ and others, even by giving up their lives for the power of witness. Well, perhaps this new year, we need to challenge ourselves to live with a better witness. We need to commit to giving evidence to the love of Christ by what we say and do. Being real. And not caring what others think about your love for Jesus. I need every single one of you, I need you to be real in your faith. Just like you need me to be real, right? You're like, I can't wait to listen to our fake pastor. No, you have expectations that I'm here to speak the truth, that I'm living in the Spirit, and I need that from you as well. And this leads into our second thing. You are the light of the world. See, there are other places in the Gospel where Jesus talks about what it means to be a witness. In fact, in the middle of his most famous sermon, Jesus tells his followers that they have a very important job to do. They are to be lights in the darkness. We live in a dark, dark world. Sometimes, I think many of you think that you can't be a light. That, you know, only pastors are, are, are to be a light, or only certain strong Christians can be the light. But as soon as you ask Jesus Christ into your life to forgive you of your sins, to say, God, I'm worthless, I'm, I, I'm tired of the way I am, 
Please save me, Lord. The light has entered into you. You are the light. Sometimes I think you, 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 we, we think that you know, you're, you're not worthy enough. You're not strong enough. You're not spiritual enough. Yes, you are. You need to understand who Jesus is to you and be simply you and Christ. In Matthew 5, 14, 16, it says, You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand. And it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Have you ever wondered how important light really is? Without it, when everything goes dark, things become so difficult to accomplish. The importance and significance of Jesus' words to the disciples would have been clearly understood in those days. See, something had to be lit in the night like a torch or, 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 or a lamp or a candle. And light was a precious thing. That was not taken for granted. We, we take it for granted, right? We flip a switch at night. Praise God for electricity. And when Jesus was born into the world, he came into the midst of the darkness. He came to people who were full of sin and, and broken. And he was the only true light. You come to church this morning, and every Sunday you come here because you're expecting to be touched by the light of Jesus. See, the witness of his life says this. You know what it's like to be in the dark. You know how even a small light can change everything. And this is what I've come to do. And when you place your faith, when you place your hope and trust in me, you now, have, you now have that same light that originates with me living inside of you. You know, do, do this um, experiment sometime. Go into a room that's literally pitch black and just light a little match. And you will be surprised how much light is in that room by that little match. That's you in this world. It's also interesting that Jesus would use a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. What did he mean by that? See, when Jesus preaches this message, he was more than likely in the hills of Galilee. In the ancient Near East, a city... Uh, w was often built on, on a high point of the surrounding area. And this made, uh, 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 this made it safe from invasion. It also was extremely visible, especially at night. And the placement for the city was so important for those traveling at night. It was easily seen from far off, and the only place the light would be seen was at night. Some scholars believe or think that Jesus would have been speaking and pointing to a city in that area. Like, you are the light of the world. You are like a city on a hill. Like he's pointing to a city. And there was a city at that time called uh, Safad, which was about 2,560 feet above sea level. And it probably would have been seen by everyone around. And if you consider yourself a Christian, you are a light to the world to eliminate the darkness and a light for the way for others to see. You're a city on a hill. 
to be a visible place, to be a visible place of refuge, of protection. You could be trusted. You'll be visible to all as a city placed on a high point when you faithfully live for Jesus. The last main point is this. Don't be ashamed. See, one of the challenges to living as a better witness in this past year is fearing what others think about you. Fearing about what others think about your relationship with Jesus. And sometimes you might be embarrassed or even ashamed that you're considered just even a churchgoer. Some of you might be timid about boldly living out your Christian conviction. And Paul was the greatest witness for Jesus, and he offers us the reason for his willingness to live boldly for Jesus in the book of Romans. Romans 1.16 says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. See, Paul was not ashamed because his message was the good news about Christ. And when you have great news to share, you're not ashamed. Actually, you can't wait to share it. It's the message of salvation. It has life-changing power, and it's for everyone. And because this is the most important news, Paul was not ashamed going to be silenced. He was not going to hide his faith. Paul is encouraging his readers to be better witnesses because there's so much at stake. It would be one thing if hell wasn't real. Hell's real. It's real. And you know who's going to be there with you? Demons who hate your guts. And they're trying to destroy you. They're gonna, you're going to think, oh, hey, you're in hell with me now. Hey, we're cool. Yeah, yeah, I made your life miserable all those years. We're cool now, man. Let's party. No. They're there to make your life even more. And it's, there's no hope. You can't even look at, well, you know, in a thousand years from now, I will spend my time in hell, and then God will have mercy, and I can go to heaven. No. It's for all eternity. And it's real. That's why we witness. You need Jesus Christ. Period. And that's what Paul's saying. I'm not ashamed. I don't care what you think of me. You need Jesus. You can tell I'm not speaking here. That God is speaking here. Because I have no strength. I've had no strength. The power of God is with us to strengthen us, to give us the words, to, to give us the ability to share the good news of Jesus to everyone he brings in our path. And if we focus on what God is doing in the world rather than our own inadequacy, we won't be ashamed. We won't be embarrassed. Leighton Ford, or Leighton Ford, who was an evangelist, a poet, and a brother-in-law to Billy Graham, he wrote a book called Good News is for Sharing. And in it, there are these questions to ask ourselves whenever we become fearful, like, when I'm conscious of fear or failing holding me back, or failure holding me back, I go through a kind of personal checklist, like, does this fear come basically from pride? Am I too concerned of what others think? Do I remember that God has called me first to faithfulness and and not to efficiency? 
Do I trust that the Holy Spirit is working before me, with me, and through me? Do I remember that God does his greatest work when I seem to be the weakest? Isn't that, after all, the mystery of the cross? Let me conclude. See, we hold in our hearts the good news of Jesus Christ. The good news is that because of the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus, our lives can be transformed and made new. We have experienced forgiveness and hope and joy. We are witnesses, but we must overcome our fear to share with the world that it is that is in great need. The gospel needs to be shared. Who is one person in your life that you can be a witness to? What is the one thing that you can do to be a better witness to the world around you? In this new year, look for opportunities to be an advocate for Christ, to make him real. Because that's what people are hungry for. They want to, you're a Christian? I hope you're the real deal. I hope you're not one of these fake Christians. If you're a Christian, Jesus has given you a command that you cannot blow off. It's like Jesus is saying, Show me that I am real in your life 24-7 and allow me to reveal myself to others through you. And the truth is, we will have a better year if we focus on better priorities, if we focus on better relationships, and if we focus on better choices. And if we've made these three changes in our lives, we will naturally be better witnesses and it will become very natural. Our lives will bear witness to him and will open up opportunities to share the good news with others. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this series we've been on, this better series, better priorities in our lives, better relationships, better choices, better witness. Jesus, become real in us. There's so much at stake. And you're so addicting. Your love is so addicting. We all need it. God, we're being lied to every day. That if you want true love, The world tries to show you it, and it's lying. It's a trap. Jesus, you're the true love. You love us so much. You gave up your kingdom to come here as a child, to come here as a human being, to come and live a perfect life, to come and sacrifice yourself so that we can have a hope and a future. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.
Lord, here we are. But we have seen the rising sun awakening the early dawn. And we're rising up to give you praise. But we have seen the stars and moon. See how they shine, they shine for you. And you're calling us to do the same. So we rise up with the song. And we rise up with the cry. And we're giving you our life. Stand with us, everyone. We will shine. We will shine like stars in the universe, holding out your truth in the darkest place. We'll be living for your glory. Jesus will be living for your glory. But we have seen. Sometimes I'm like, uh, no way, 
I just, I just kind of get a little out of control sometimes. But I'm just so overwhelmed by the love of God and just everyone needs that love, right? Um, we've been spending about six, seven weeks in Sunday school studying communion and just getting a better understanding of how powerful and how serious it is. Next Sunday is the Lord's Supper. So I encourage you, prepare your hearts this week and be able to participate in that amazing thing that God has given us. God bless you, everyone. Have a great week. Amen.